Okay, hello bio two. We're gonna finish up reptiles today. And the first part we're gonna focus on is kind of how they survive on land. Really important, one of the most important features of how they survived on land is their reproductive methods. So most reptiles are oviparous, meaning they lay eggs that develop outside of the mother's body. And all reptiles reproduce by internal fertilization in which the male will deposit sperm inside the female's cloaca. So that's process of almost cons is consistent almost across the entire reptile group and again mo again most reptiles lay eggs some do give live birth but again for the most part they lay eggs and it's through internal fertilization and after fertilization the female's reproductive system will cover the embryo with several membranes and a leathery shell so that's kind of like this is really important this one right here the female's reproductive system covers the embryo with several membranes and a leathery shell because this is going to able enable the eggs to be laid away from or outside of the water to whereas all the amphibians they had to lay their eggs inside of water because they really didn't have anything to protect them to try to lay them on land they would just dry out and so the shell and membranes protect the embryo and they prevent the egg from drying out so that's a big advantage so this type of egg is what is called an amniotic egg so this is really important amniotic egg and is one of the most important adaptations to life on land and we're going to talk about it, we're going to break it down more in specific. And an amniotic egg has four membranes, the amnion, the yolk sac, the chorion, and what's called the allantoy. Or the allantoy, I believe is how you say that, the allantoy. And so we have our first part of our amniotic egg, it's called the amnion, and it's the fluid-filled sac that surrounds and cushions the developing embryo. So inside of the egg, we have what's called the amnion, and our embryo in this picture is our purple structure right here. We can see the blue vessels around it. And so this light blue layer around it is our amnion. It's filled with fluid and it protects our developing embryo. And then the chorion will regulate the transport of oxygen and CO2 between the surface of the egg and the embryo. So the embryo, even though it's inside this egg, it still needs to breathe. It still gives off CO2 and it still needs to take in oxygen. So this kind of bubbly layer right here called the chorion is what regulates this. It kind of helps get oxygen in and take CO2 out. Again, this is really advanced structures just inside of an egg. And then our next, our yolk sac contains the yolk that serves as a nutrient rich food supply for the embryo. So again, we've talked about this before, but the function of yolk is just to provide food basically for the developing embryo. And that's this portion right here. This all this big red mass is the yolk sac. And then the allantoy stores the waste produced by the embryo. So if they didn't have this structure, the embryo is producing waste, it would probably end up poisoning itself. It would be such a nasty environment, but this allantoy keeps that from happening. It, it stores the waste until the embryo is ready to hatch. So that is the amniotic egg. Again, it's a very important structure. And then obviously in this picture, this outer kind of peaches colored layer is our leathery shell. So that's it for how reptiles have adapted to living life on land. So now we're going to look at what are our four living orders of reptiles. So what are our groups of reptiles that are alive today? So our four orders are lizards and snakes, so that's our first one. Our crocodiles, we have turtles and tortoises, and the what is kind of the most obscure one called the tuitara. But we'll get into each one of these in depth. So lizards are our first one. So lizards, most lizards have four legs and clawed toes. Most lizards have external ears and movable eyelids, and then some lizards have evolved into highly specialized forms. So lizards are just basically kind of our, one of our most common reptiles that we see around here, besides snakes, and they are actually one of our first reptiles to kind of first to come along. And then snakes, so all a snake is is a lizard with no legs, so lizards actually came first in terms of evolution, and then snakes, so it's kind of a weird progress, you'd think that legs would come afterwards, but snakes came second so they have no legs they have immovable eyelids and they have no external ear openings and they are very efficient predators so we've talked about all the different types of adaptations with being able to taste the environment detect body heat pick up vibrations all those things make them very efficient predators so that's snakes and lizards again snakes and lizards make up one group so our second group are called the crocodilians and our crocodilians have long broad snouts and they have a squat appearance meaning they're kind of more they're kind of very compact I guess a compact appearance and they prey on animals from fish to deer 
They can even eat humans, but again, that's in rare cases. And females will guard their eggs from predators and watch over the young after the ha eggs hatch. So, uh, members of this group are some of the most fierce parents you can imagine. You would never want to go anywhere near an alligator or crocodile nest because the mother is most likely very nearby and she will defend them very fiercely and the same when they're hatched and when they're young so you never want to go near a young alligator or crocodile whenever the mother is around and members of this group can only live where it is warm year-round and so that's why you see in America and the golf courses down in Florida that's where you're gonna see some of the alligators so alligators are kind of are the ones that we have here in the United States and then kind of one of their cousins is what's called the Cayman which is just a smaller version they can live only in fresh water and they're found mo almost exclusively in North and South America so that's alligators and crocodiles can live either in fresh or salt water and they're more native to Africa India and Southeast Asia so people often ask what the difference between crocodiles and alligators are uh, a lot of it just has to deal with where they live, the ability that one can live in fresh water and one lives almost exclusively in salt water. And there's a little differences in the shape of their teeth, but it's really hard to actually tell the difference between an alligator and crocodile. You just kind of have to go based off region is kind of one of the easiest ways to tell them apart. So for our next group are our turtles and tortoises. And our difference between a turtle and a tortoise is turtles live in land, or sorry, turtles live in water, so this is an important thing to know, the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. And tortoises will live on land, and then kind of one that's in between, or I'm sorry, not in between, but kind of a completely different example is what's called a terrapin, and this is a turtle that lives in water that is somewhat salty. So this is the difference between a turtle and tortoise is where you live. And Turtles and tortoises are famous because they have a two-part shell that's actually built into their skeleton. And so the dorsal part, which it would be what we would call the top, is known as the carapace. And then our ventral part is known as the plastron, so that would be there underneath the flat portion would be the plastron. And then the head, legs, and tail will emerge from holes where the carapace and the plastron join. And then tortoises and turtles can pull themselves into, into their shells for protection. So there's some turtles that can pull themselves all the way in. Others, being aquatic species, cannot quite pull themselves completely in. And so for our last example of a reptile is a tuitara. So that's how you pronounce that word, is a tuitara. And these ones are extremely, extremely rare, and they're only found in a few islands off, the, off of the country of New Zealand. And they lack external ears, and they have very primitive scales. Actually, they have a really weird organ called the third eye, which is... a part of a complex organ that's located on the top of the brain. So tuitars, they look very similar to lizards. They are actually different. Very ancient group. So to finish off reptiles, many reptiles are in danger because of habitat destruction by humans, and humans are also hunting reptiles for food, for pets, and for their skins. And there's actually a lot of laws in place for that second part, the pets actually now, to kind of prevent them from being just taken out of the wild and they actually have to be born and raised in captivity but again there's still people always going to break the laws and laws protect some species but more conservation efforts are needed to counteract the dwindling numbers of our reptiles so that's it for reptiles let me know if you have any questions